Hi, my name is Lynn, and thanks for joining me today. I have a showcase of the cards that I made using Pink and Main's Crafty Courtyard Box from May 2021. This one's called Butterfly Kisses. And I do have a um, tutorial video, or I should say a series, uh, tutorial series of videos where I show how to how I made these cards. And I'm doing things a little bit differently where instead of one really long tutorial where I show you how I make all the cards, um, I actually broke out the videos into shorter segments that are more focused on um, specific tools in the kit. So my one of the videos focuses on the stamp and die set. So I made these two cards. They're very, they're going to be very similar to each other, but you'll be able to see in the video the technique that I used to do the coloring, um, on just half of the butterfly. And I did use, um, some heat embossing, some shimmer powders, which I love, love playing with. And I did bring in my own, um, Nuvo, I think it's ebony uh, crystal drops just to kind of bring, um, use that black as a highlight and the gold glitter that is from my stash as well. So that one is, I think, DCWV's, um, six by six glitter pack. And then my, um, second card is very, very similar. This is slightly different in that I die cut out of vellum as well, and this isn't glued all the way down, whereas um, on this one, the butterfly is glued down all the way edge to edge. Um, and on this uh, butterfly here, I did use my watercolor pencils. I have a set of Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils, which are phenomenal. They, You get a lot of color payload, you can um, blend colors, you can layer the color to, br uh, to increase the intensity, and um, they're just really fun to work with. I tried to pick some colors that were sort of um, uh, reminiscent of the shimmer powder that I used on this side, which was Lilac Waterfall. I think on this one I used Green Parade Shimmer Powder. And again, the glitter paper, the pink glitter paper is from that uh, DCWV pack. And again, uh, I used the black um, Nuvo Drops just to um, accent the card as a finishing touch. So then my next video focuses on the embossing folder that we got. So again, two similar cards. I did try to um, do a technique that didn't quite turn out, but I still wanted to show you and I'll still kind of talk about what I did. So I um, inked up the embossing folder with Versamark and clear heat embossed. Um, this panel. And so that gives you sort of these darker um, areas where the embossing folder pushes down into your card. And so I think that just makes the, the sunburst pattern just really pop a lot more than um, if you didn't, you know, apply the Versamark and heat emboss it. What I tried to do on this card was make my own diffuser plate. I have, um, I don't know if you've seen those diffuser plates that, plates that Sizzix has where basically instead of the top cutting plate that you would use, um, they have another sort of plastic plate that has an aperture cut out of it. And essentially what that, um, does when you use it for heat or for um, with your embossing, dry embossing folder is let's say it had a circle aperture that's cut out. Well, where that circle is, there's no plastic. So there's no pressure um, getting exerted into your card. So when you run your panel through your die cutting machine, there's going to be embossing everywhere except for where that aperture is. And that's really nice because then it's nice. It's flat. You can stamp on there if you wanted. Um, you can attach things there and not have to worry about an uneven surface. So I tried to do that uh, by creating my own custom aperture or diffusing plate by die cutting the butterfly out of 120 pound uh, cardstock, 
two times, glued those two pieces together, and ran that through um, my uh, die cutting machine to emboss this panel. So you can kind of see where it's a little bit lighter. Um, it's pretty much in the shape of of the butterfly, and if I didn't have the vellum um, covering it up, you can almost make out that it's it's the shape of a butterfly, but it still does have the sunburst pattern on it. So not 100% successful. I probably have to make that um, DIY diffusing point maybe like two or three times thicker than what it was because it just wasn't thick enough to um, prevent the center from being embossed. But I tried and I'll try again until I'm successful at that technique. Um, but my second card is really similar. The, se the second card I just did a regular emboss. Um, there's a little bit of a difference in that. This is the same colored cardstock, but this one I embossed on the texture side, whereas this one I embossed on the smoother side or the back side of the paper. So, um, here you see a little bit more texture, um, and but otherwise it's it's fairly similar um, the effect that you get. I almost think that it was a cleaner emboss here um, because you can see the lines are really really clean and crisp. But yeah, really really fun um, technique to use um, heat embossing combined with your dry embossing to get a very striking look and just um, with some clear embossing powder. So that's this one. The thank you sentiment that did come from my stash because I needed thank you cards at the moment. So I thought these would be really great for that. But um, the enamel dots are from the kit and this um, glitter cardstock is from my stash as well because I just thought it, it matched the enamel dots really, really well. Um, better than the glitter paper that we did get in the kit. So that's why I went with that. And similarly, this is the same glitter paper as I used here. So that came from my stash too. So those two cards focus on the embossing folder. Then um, my last, uh, well, not my last two, my next two cards uh, focus on the stencil that we got. Because we got a lot in this kit. We had a stamp set, coordinating dies, um, embossing folder and stencil. By the way, with this um, uh, design, you could easily have used the sweet friend word die cuts that do come in the kit because similar to um, the thank you, it does have the backing plate, you know, the shadow die as well as the word die itself. So you could achieve the exact same thing uh, using the word dies that did come in the kit. I just happen to need thank you cards at the moment. So that's why I chose to use that instead. With this one, I actually was um, inspired by, you'll see in a second, um, a pattern paper that came in um, the kit where there was a butterfly um, design that appeared to kind of be stamped over um, a pattern paper, which um, also, you know, that pattern without the butterflies is also in the paper pad. Um, so I tried that out where I stenciled, uh, I just used some, I think it's Seedless Preserve Distress Ink, and I stenciled it over one of the bokeh backgrounds. So there's a lot of textures, there's a lot of different things, but it's it's really subtle and um, very tone on tone. And so even though there's a lot going on, you've got the pattern in the pattern paper, you've got the stenciling, and you have the stamping, um, everything just uh, kind of melds together and it's not too, too busy, mostly because there aren't like a lot of different colors. It's really just shades of purple and, and the black. And I used the holographic um, and the silver sequins and confetti as an accent. And so um, really, really cute card. With this, I was a little bit nervous to stamp on to the coated paper. So I did use stays on, but I should have, 
uh, not been lazy and actually pulled out my stamping platform so that I could re-stamp multiple times in the exact same space because I did not get a perfect impression uh, when I stamped this image. And I did intentionally only stamp half. Um, so what I did to kind of fix that, which I was surprised worked but it, and wasn't actually too hard, but I took my black glaze pen and I just traced over <laughs> where I stamped. And so anywhere that was kind of a really fuzzy, um, not fuzzy, but just, you know, imperfect inking, I just drew right over it. And um, really, I just outlined everything just so that it's consistent because that black glaze pen does give you a little bit of a shine. It almost looks like it's been um, heat and bust. So, um, so that's how I fixed that and it, it worked perfectly. So that cleaned it up really well. Then um, I made a second card because what I often like to do when I uh, finish with a stencil is I'll clean off that stencil onto another just plain white um, panel or in this case I, I did it right onto a card blank. And that just gives you a second uh, pattern. So you're cleaning your stencil and and I just use a little baby wipe and so that just moves the ink right onto the paper which then absorbs it. So you don't have like a perfect stenciling um, so it's a very different look but it's pretty neat and um, you know you get double duty. You're cleaning your stencil and you get a, a free second background out of it. So I did the exact same um, stamping technique, except that I did just use my uh, VersaFine, which stamped perfectly because this is just re a regular uh, card blank. And um, then with the sequins, I just used all the different shapes that you get. So different shapes, different size sequins in the same color, uh, mixed in with those more of the uh, holographic butterflies. And I was trying to go for some motion, so started very narrow down here. And the idea being dream big, so just having, you know, that spray of um, sequins and confetti expanding and, and getting bigger. Um, so that's uh, the two cards that I used that were more focused on the stencil that we got. Then um, the last two cards are a little bit more focused on the pattern papers. So this was the pattern paper that I um, mentioned a second ago uh, that inspired this card. So in the paper pack, we actually do get another sheet of pattern paper that's just that uh, sort of off-white burlap. And um, and so we have that in addition to this one. And so that's what made me think, oh, I could I could just stencil um, that butterfly pattern over top of uh, some pattern paper and see what that would look like. And I think that turned out kind of cute. Um, I like it. And this card's pretty simple, um, but what I, I did pull in um, a nested uh, frames die from Tonic Studios. And one of the things that I did was with this stamp, let's see, so originally this stamp, um, oh, it's on this card. So originally the sentiment is, I cannot wait to see you soar. And I don't know why, but initially when I saw that and I, st I made that card, I thought that the stamp just read, I cannot wait to see you. <laughs> And then, and then after I did everything, I was like, oh, that's not what it says at all. It says, I cannot wait to see you soar. And I wanted a card that says, I cannot wait to see you because, um, you know, we're hoping to be able to visit some folks soon. And so I thought it would be nice to let them know by sending them a card that says, I cannot wait to see you. So um, I decided that I would alter that stamp to um, to just say, I cannot wait to see you. And all I did was some masking so I could actually um, stack the sentiment up instead of having it really long. And, and that way I was able to kind of fit it onto this little um, sort of die cut here. And I did use um, just a little strip of um, uh, Love From Lizzie's uh, pinstripe stickers. I love, I love those pinstripe stickers and almost 
you'll probably see almost every time I butt up, um, you know, solid color with a patterned paper, I almost always put a line of um, pinstripe sticker. It just helps to um, make that transition just look a little bit better, a little bit more uh, neat and polished. And in this case, it's a silver, which I think actually turned out to, to look um, okay, even though you know, the burlap isn't really a silver, but I think I think it still looks very tone on tone and, and really nice. So that's this card. And then my last card is this one, which also is a little, little bit of a celebration of um, the pattern paper. And it's very, you know, it's pretty much, you know, a flat card because um, I just uh, stamped with Versamark and then heat and white heat embossed over it. And I, um, I don't know if it's because it's a coated card, but it almost looks, um, and it could also, it could be because maybe I overheat embossed. I don't know, but it, it looks, um, kind of grainy almost. And I don't know if you can really pick that up on the camera as well as I can see it in, in, um, in real life, but it's, uh, you know what it looks like? It, it, it looks like, um, I haven't melted the embossing powder yet. You know, when you've just pour embossing powder over, um, your Versamark and um and it still looks grainy and all um you know you can still kind of see the individual you know embossing powder grains it looks like that except that it is bright bright white and it's very clearly you know melted cuz i can i can run my finger over it i can feel it the enamel and everything but it just has that that very grainy look which I think I kind of like. I mean, I didn't know that that would happen, but um, I'm going to have to try it again on another piece of pattern paper um, just to test out whether, whether um, you know, you always get this effect. Because I wonder if the Versamark actually beat it up a little bit, perhaps, on the slick surface of the... Um, coated cardstock. And you know, one of the nice things as I was thinking about this, I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. But then um, I felt a little bit reassured by the fact that the pattern papers are double sided. So I thought, well, worst comes to worst. If it doesn't work out, I'll just use the other side <laughs> of the pattern paper. But it worked out just fine. Um, I didn't get a perfect stamping but um but I almost rather like that imperfection just because it it kind of goes with that graininess of um how the embossing uh took to it so so I, I really like how that turned out. I mean, it's such a simple card, really easy to put to, and fast really to put together, but I think it's beautiful and it really does, um, you know, let the pattern paper shine, um, but still, you know, give it interest and, um, that came together really well. And the enamel dots are also from, uh, the pink and main kit as well. So those are all of the cards that I made using um, this kit. I had a lot of fun with it and um, I'll probably use it a lot more because I barely touched any of the pattern paper. I still have a lot of it left and um, it's just such a beautiful, everything about it is beautiful. The stamp and die set's beautiful. I love the embossing folder. Um, the stencil is really great too. So all very usable um, um, you know, stash building tools. And that's one of the things that I'm really enjoying about the pink and main kits these days. Um, they're fantastic stash builders. And in the same way that I think of tonic, uh, craft kits as being really great stash builders, these are, these are kind of the same, um, because you just get so many tools, you get high quality product and, and so much of it too. So really, really fantastic value for money, um, these kits. So 
Um, thank you again for joining me. I hope that uh, everybody's doing well. If you did enjoy this video, please do consider liking, sharing, and commenting. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel as well. And if you hit the notification bell, then you'll get a little notification anytime I publish a new video. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Thanks. Bye.